Uh, the other area which is a major clinical unmet need is how we manage those patients who do relapse. If you're going to relapse uh, after a transplant for AML and the risk is about 40 to 70 percent depending on your molecular status uh, and also depending on the amount of measurable residual disease that was present immediately prior to transplant, you're most likely to relapse in the first year. Uh, and uh, there's a number of approaches which have been used historically which are rather unsatisfactory, notably the use of intensive chemotherapy which is often poorly tolerated and uh, often not very effective. We recently published in collaboration with the EBMT a large series of 180 patients who received azacitidine as treatment of relapse and that's actually quite a promising agent if you relapse more than six months post-transplant you have less than 20% blasts at the time of uh, relapse and particularly if you're transplanted for MDS and also if you were transplanted for AML you were transplanted in CR. But there's a significant number of patients who don't respond to azacitinib, and we recently published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology a study where we combined azacitidine with lenalidomide. Lenalidomide is a, a, an interesting agent uh, post-transplant. It upregulates uh, uh, T-cell activation uh, and therefore plausibly may augment a graft versus tumor response. So putting that together with azacitidine is a nice combination, but historically the use of lenalidomide immediately post-transplant has been associated with a very significant risk of uh, GVHD. So we were interested to note that we could give high doses of lenalidomide up to 25 milligrams daily safely with no apparent increase in GVHD. And in this small dose finding study, we saw uh, higher rates than one might expect in terms of uh, major clinical response CRs, almost 50%. So these data need uh, evaluating in a prospective study. And then I think we also need to be mindful in the setting of patients who've relapsed that actually uh, next generation sequencing at the time of relapse is important because it may uh, direct you to the use of targeted therapies. There's some uh, good data from the Quantum R study showing that quitsartanib or potentially other FLT3 inhibitors can be very effective in patients who relapse post-transplant. And so we need to be bearing in mind that we need uh, strategies that use agents with broad anti-tumor activity and also maybe in patients with uh, specific molecular mutations we might be able to use targeted therapies. But there's much to be done in this space and an urgent need again for prospective randomized studies. So taken together this is an area that uh, requires intensive research. There's a, a range of emerging possibilities and it's the rapid delivery of randomized trials of transplanted patients that's an absolute pivotal importance if we're going to improve outcome and therefore the institution and support of a global Early significant transplant trial networks such as the highly effective US Clinical Trials Network and the more recently uh, funded UK Impact Transplant Trial Network is from a, both a patient perspective and a scientific perspective an absolutely uh, key imperative.